easy puzzles. In a minute, we're going to go through an easy puzzle step by step. But first, I'm going to explain the golden technique used for solving each and every Sudoku puzzle. It's called slicing and dicing. Slicing and dicing. Here's how you do it. We're going to use slicing and dicing to try and place a nine in the middle left mini grid. To find out where the nine could go, we need to look at the middle band of mini grids and use the information we've already been given in each of the rows. Slicing through row four, we can see that a nine hasn't yet been placed anywhere else in the row. So the empty box in the centre of the mini grid we're studying is a possibility. Slicing through row five, we find a nine already in column seven. Only a single nine is allowed to be placed in each row, which means that the two empty boxes in row five of the middle left mini grid can't possibly contain a nine. Slicing through row six, we find a nine already placed in column five. Again, only a single nine is allowed in each row, so we can now also rule out the two empty boxes in row six of the middle left mini grid. We know that the middle left mini grid must contain a nine, and we've eliminated four out of the five empty squares in the mini grid. So this leaves the empty box in the center of row four as the only possibility. So we can go ahead quite happily and place number nine in that box. We can now try and place a nine in the bottom left mini grid. Slicing through row seven, we find there's a nine already in column four. This means the two empty boxes in row seven of the bottom left mini grid cannot contain a number nine as well. Slicing through row eight, we can see that the row doesn't contain any other nines, which makes the empty box in column one a possibility for us. Moving on to slice through row nine, we find a nine has already been placed in column nine. This eliminates the two empty boxes in row nine of the bottom left mini grid, as you can only ever have one nine in each row. We know that the bottom left mini grid must contain a nine as each mini grid has to contain one of each number. So we can therefore go ahead and place a number nine in the one empty box that we have left, the empty box in column one. So far, we've managed to place two number nines simply by slicing through the rows. Now we're going to use slicing and dicing at the same time to try and place a number nine in the top left mini grid. So, slicing through row one, we find there is already a number nine in column six. So that rolls out the two empty boxes in columns two and three of the top left mini grid. By slicing through rows two and three, we can see that neither of these rows contain a number nine yet. This means that the four empty boxes in rows two and three of the top left mini grid all seem to be possibilities for number nine. Now we can use dicing to narrow down those options. Dicing down through column one, we find a number nine in row eight. We know that there can only be one of each number in each column, so we can immediately rule out our two empty boxes in rows two and three of column one. Dicing down through column two, we find a number nine in row four. This now rules out the empty box in row three of column two. So after slicing and dicing, we are only left with one possible box in the top left mini grid, which can contain a number nine. Slicing through rows and dicing down columns is the basic technique used to complete every Sudoku puzzle, as it enables us to go through a simple process of elimination to determine where our missing numbers can be placed.